dogs are barking like crazy. I just wanted to show you something very interesting. Okay. The reason why I'm out here... I mean, the sun just went down. I mean, I can still see... I should have filmed this earlier, but this object actually appeared a little bit in the daylight. And I'm sorry I'm behind on my filming. Um, I do spend time with my family. I think that comes above all before putting your paranormal work first. But... I did happen to come out here and film because I wanted to show you tonight's UFO. Pay very close attention. Okay, you hear the dogs barking. It's just above a hill right now. There we go. This is not a broken corona. The same spot where this object appeared last time, it had the broken corona. And I shot up to the northeast sky and had another object of the broken corona. And someone had suggested to me that they might be sh using some sort of laser beam that shoots downward to maybe scan the area. It could be that they're. Maybe it has something to do with Bigfoot, since they're over the mountains, over the high Sierras. Maybe the Bigfoot scout the land, the environment. They survive a few weeks, we never see them in the woods, because maybe they go back up to the stars. They could be some alien race, or something of the sorts. Just, you know, we gotta keep an open mind. I realize that all this footage we're putting forth is very strange, but you got to follow this case. And, um, you know, but he did make a good point, Razzle Dazzle, it's his name on Google Plus, that, you know, maybe the re reason why the coronas were broken is they were scanning some, some kind of scanning object or that it had parts on it where the lights did not exist other parts of the craft possibly you know we see this all the time on jets and, and even the flying government triangles you know you have light it's sometimes not equally distributed just a little red light here and there you know so it's possible the craft had areas where the light could not reach or it had maybe it you know other parts of the craft with maybe no lights or some beam maybe that scan down. A lot of people say they shoot these beam, invisible laser beams to scan an area, maybe abduct, maybe even show up in someone's bedroom like this one abductee case we've talked about with someone. I'm holding the camera shaky because Honestly, I don't have a tripod to fit this cam. I really don't want to use a tripod. Um, I like to freehand my work. I don't care if the object's moving around. We want you to pause it, unpause it. Every third of a second. And you can see some of these up to six colors a second with, with these spherical type objects. It may not even be spherical. It could be oblong. And it could be faced at an angle, and it looks like there's a corona that's cut where there's no light reaching. But this is not the case tonight. Because let me explain to you. I cannot, I can, the object's awfully far away, so I'm not going to be able to, it's not as close. But the, it started to pulsate a little less if you're watching it. It's not as fast, it's not as bright which means it's either very far off or it's just powering down where it gets to a point where it just vanishes. That's about as close as I can get it. it 
could mean the object moved in closer. But my point is, if you'd really take a good look at this object, as soon as I can get it focused right about there, yeah, see, it's dimming out. It's going to vanish, man. It's not going to stay in the skies much longer. Check us out, www.paranormalghostsociety.org. This is all one UFO case, even though they're different objects. They're all probably related in some form or another, or either that or the aliens really like to stop in Nevada for some beef stew. <laughs> either that or maybe the aliens want to stop in for lunch, who knows. Look, the, right there, see how it's showing up? The corona this time is not broken. This is a, this comes a day later after I seen a similar object over This comes a day after filming another object on Tuesday, the 21st at 3 a.m. And the object I filmed is much similar to this. But you can tell it's farther out tonight. It's amazing. How can I not film this? I want to believe, as they say. But I really do believe. I am a believer, especially after seeing this. The object is over the Sierras, or actually the foothills right now, of the Sierras here in Nevada. It's not being sighted over the California Carson Range, or... See, the last UFO I filmed was over Woodford's. It's over an area where the old Pony Express is. And we climbed a peak. Wow, this is just amazing. Anyhow, my sons and I, we climbed this peak called Terry Peak in the Woodfords. And that's where the object was kind of hovering in that vicinity. in that little area. I've zoomed out and what I'm doing is I'm showing you the object, how low it is to the sky as compared to my roof. It's more, it could be over the high desert, it could be a little further south where the Sierras start to cut southeast. Um, it's hard saying, it's so low to the sky tonight, you know, and it dims out. You can see it dims out. But you can also see it's the same, it's a, much of the same like the object I caught. Over Cary Peak. The thing is, the Kerry Peak footage is strange because you see something moving around inside the object. It's looking like turning parts, machinery, maybe that might be just causing the lights to flicker. It's some sort of technology, anti-gravity, nuclear physics, and fission. A highly advanced race of aliens would only visit this planet to come from where they're coming from or to have the technology they would have they'd have to be millions of years old but you know you can see machine moving around and then i filmed the object on the 19th of january of 2014 and just so everybody knows i'm marking it down it is january 
It is January 22nd of 2014. So when I got the footage on the 19th, I had an object in this same area, actually two, and they both had a slice or a place where the lights did not reach the lower right-hand corner on the craft. This is an entirely different object, but in the same area, but tonight it's different. It has a full corona. Maybe they had, maybe it is a government craft. Maybe the lights weren't working and they got them fixed. And now they're testing it and surveying the area. Who knows what they're doing? I'm so sick of you UFO groups being rude to me. I share my footage. They tell me I'm a waste of time. It's a waste of time. All sightings should be held credible, especially when they're real sightings. And, you know, it was very strange because the object that I filmed over here, when it turned blue, it phased out. You could see a black shadow cover half of it, like it lost its power or dimmed out. And it was crazy. You could see it was like a half moon, half of blue lit, and then there was like a black shade. It could have phased out or been phasing out. When I say phase out, I mean maybe teleport out of here, disappear into a portal, wormhole, whatever you want to call it. We've There's been sightings like that. Trust me. But you could see this big black mass cover half of the object. It's like, oh, maybe their lights, how how they pulsate is how they maybe, it's based on their ascension or when they descend or based on elevation or, you know, they may want to turn it on, make it look like it's a star or a planet. But when we sit there, we can take the video every third second and I can count. Sometimes it changes two to three colors at the same time and it can, it can, you can get as many as six to eight different colors in a second if you slowed it down just 0.1 of a second and you kept pausing, unpause it, you could break my video apart. Take it apart in frames. It's got my copy, right? You'll see that the video is very authentic. And the one thing I'm really tired of with these ufologists is they tell me how to film a ufo but they do not have any ufo footage themselves so in other words how can they speak when they have had no real experience or hands-on work i do hands-on work i'm an old school guy i don't want to put it on a tripod all those tripod videos you see, most of them are hoaxes. People dangling stuff in front of the camera and pasting stuff into a still camera. And it's just too good to be true. Life's not like that. You know, It. my work may be flawed, but that's what makes it beautiful. It's an art what we do. This is an art, I mean, to film this. It's hard to hold it steady. It's hard to focus. It, it wants to go out of focus because of all the different colors of lights. You notice there's a lot of gold and yellow in it right now. It's totally switched its patterns. And it's gotten much closer. But no longer a broken corona. Maybe it's a different craft, or maybe they're not shooting lasers, which would be causing the break in the corona, the light, because they might be using some advanced scanning technology. Maybe they're feeding on information in people's homes, you know. Just being able, can you imagine being an alien intelligence and you could, you could literally go in the head of thousands of people at once? It's like a secret alien invasion. Maybe an invasion is not going to happen. Maybe it's already happened. Anyways, the dogs are barking. I have an object up here. I think I proved my point. Like I said, do not ask, tell me how to film when you don't have films yourself, okay? Most people dream about getting sightings like this, and, and people should cherish it. I'm not doing this to get famous. I'm doing this to teach people what to look for in the night skies. If you want to be a ufologist, you want to learn. I've come close to aliens before. I've come real close to other craft that I did not film. Let's just, I'll leave it at that. And I've been out at Area 51, and... The work we do is honest, nothing more, nothing less. And these are meant to be talked about and studied. It's not a Chinese lantern, it's not a balloon, it's not a star. Notice how it's beaten like a heartbeat now red. But if you zoom out, you get a little more light. Sorry, someone backfired. 
They shoot guns around here, too. We almost got shot on one of our UFO investigations. Anyways, I got some good close-ups just now. You can see it's much similar to the glowing object I caught three in the morning. And it was just over Cary Peak. Somebody's drumming. They must have drums in their garage. It's very rural here. Lots of cattle ranches and hills and mountains surrounding us. And that's why I think these UFOs are out there. And they could be related. And when they go over the woodsy areas, Bigfoot related. Or they could be abducting people, taking people, abducting cattle. Who knows? Who knows? I just got to keep an open mind. That might be a hub or a portal of some kind. It could be a number of different things. Maybe a hub for surveying the area, a probe like a satellite sent down, an alien satellite. Maybe it blinks just so it doesn't get hit or shot down. It tries to look like, manipulate maybe a star, and people think, oh, it twinkles. But no, this gives off luminescent. The colors do rotate. You can at times see machinery inside some of my films on the objects, just like probably they were shooting a laser beam. Or, or, or it was not a spherical shape as we thought, or an entirely different object, just like the mothership I filmed on January 3rd of 2014. Three blues, three purples, three blues, three purples. Someone said, someone said to me, how do you know it's a mothership? I said, well, I came outside and I saw an object, a white object, be ejected from the purple and blue mo ship. It's a mothership when smaller ships eject themselves out of it. It was so high in the sky and so large too. And you figure even at 50 miles away, the thing was still, I was able to zoom pretty close. It means it was a large object. This object's pretty large too. You know, there's things moving around on there. It's a craft of some sorts. Government alien, secret probes, secret military project, who knows, holograms, projection lasers and holograms. I don't know if it, you know, somebody told me it's a projection hologram, which is a UFO or of some kind. It might be from alien form. Maybe they're just trying to get us used to them by making mild contact with sightings like these, or you can film them for 20 minutes, a half hour, and more and more noticing. I've also had many local people write me telling me about their sightings, so a lot of good comes from these films. A lot of good. Anyways, this is Lord Rick. I'm going to go. I want to say peace. To all the good people out there who really care about the paranormal and are not about hating but about respect and about being able to debate and talk about these topics in a civilized manner I want to thank you for all your support aliens and ancient aliens and ufos and whatever it's called it's like aliens, ancient aliens, and UFOs, or extraterrestrials, or whatever. They, you know, they're just very rude. I'm going to film the way I want. I'm going to do what I want. I'm not here to please one person. Sorry it's shaky. I'm pretty medically fucked up. <laughs> Sorry. I'm only, you know, I'm only human. I have a soul like you too. But we're all a higher conscious being. There it phased out a little bit. You know, people should be grateful when you share of it. And unfortunately, they take it as a threat. They're scared of it. Because it's sometimes so real and they just don't want to believe. It's like, if you don't believe that, there's something wrong with you. Take a scientific approach and look at it from where I stand. This is not normal. This is abnormal. This is Laura Rick, founder of the Paranormal Ghost Society. 
So anyhow, I'm going to take on off. I got substantial film for tonight. It is January 22nd of 2014, about 7 o'clock at night.